What is semantic memory? This is a summary of the Sci246 course from Macquarie University uh, 2018. The summary is made by me in 2019. Semantic memory. This is related to remembering general knowledge, such as conceptual uh, knowledge and linguistics. It may have started out as episodic memory, but it became detached from context. Semantic memory is tested using sentence verification tasks, such as stating true or false for sentences, and the dependent variable is the reaction time for correct trials. Linguistic hedges. These can be used, which includes true statements, such as having defining and characteristic aspects to it. There's also technically speaking, which is just looking for defining terms, and there's loosely speaking, which is just looking for characteristics of those terms. Network models. Network models are concepts that are represented by nodes and links, which involves a set inclusion and attribution. Nodes are localist representations. These are the relationships and connections between concepts. So for example, there's red, and then red is linked with rose or laser light or fire or fire engine, and fire and fire engine is linked together. Hierarchy and efficiency. Hierarchical network models, these are concepts that are organized in hierarchies of inclusiveness or general categories. One must also consider cognitive economy. It is a property attribute that is stored non-redundantly at the most general level. The properties are not stored in every level of the hierarchy, and thus expertise is needed to differentiate the different types of things. So for example, in this model I have bird on the top and then the different properties of that bird can include whether the bird can fly or it cannot fly. So flightless birds would include emus, cassowaries, ostriches, penguins, etc, etc. And birds that can fly include everything else like canaries, cockatoos, uh, yada yada. Frequency of co-occurrence. Conrad in 1972 believed that reaction time was due to associative strength between the concept and the property rather than levels. Greater associative strength must have meant faster reaction time. There was also a typicality effect, whereby it was faster to process typical sets than those that were rarely used or mentioned. So for example, the idea of canary as bird often is more typical, it's faster to remember compared to emus as birds, even though both are birds. Spreading activation model. This rejects hierarchy and it relies on associative strength for links. So a concept association spread to other concepts linked to it. So for example, in this model, I have flightless birds, then I have penguins, kiwis, emus, and ostriches, and um, emus and ostriches, they would be linked as well because they look very similar to each other, despite one being from Australia and the other one being from Africa. Semantic priming effects. This is a response to words that are faster than semantically related words. It assumes that association of concepts activates related concepts that are linked to it. So for example, uh, in the model we began with red, and then it was linked to other stuff like roses, lasers, uh, fire. And basically, these things are also linked to other things, and so the links just keep linking with other stuff. So in this example, fire is linked to red and fire engines and firefighters and firefighters are linked with fire, fire engines and jobs. Lasers, red lasers, they're linked with light just as fire engines are linked with light, for example. Feature comparison model. This is whereby knowledge is represented as distributed features. Localist representations do not explain how knowledge of a concept can be degraded or how partial knowledge can lead to answering correct questions. Thus, this led to the development of distributed representations, whereby different properties are distributed over parts of the brain, and it was believed that there were no nodes holding it together, in that they were just evenly distributed. Two-stage decision model. Warrington and Shallis studied semantic dementia and found that it was the impairment of selective knowledge. So for example, patient JBR had impaired knowledge of living things and musical instruments. 
This led to the notion of feature comparison, which was tested using the sentence verification task, and it was completed in two stages. There was the first stage involved comparing the similarity of features of the subject and predictive terms, and if similar, it tended to produce a faster reaction time. And the second stage was to assume that there were two different feature types, such as defining feature, which was essential features to defining the concept, and there were characteristic features, which were less important features. It took longer to process in comparing uh, the different characteristics and thus required more differentiation and expertise. It was also found that there were similarity effects, whereby it was faster to respond to concepts in the right categories. So in this model, for example, I have birds, and the defining features of birds are that they have feathers, uh, they have wings, they can fly, but the characteristic features are only characteristic of the certain birds. So for example, robins, as opposed to ostriches, they have their certain characteristic of being small, uh, having red breasts, and yeah, a certain size and shape. While ostriches, on the other hand, they have long legs and necks, while they walk and run as opposed to fly, and they're pretty large birds. So yeah, you can see the development of these theories and how they're trying to explain how semantic memory works. Finally, organization of concepts in the brain. Perceptual functional theory stated that category-specific impairments reflected different types of properties that distinguish between category members. So for example, living things were distinguished from perceptual properties uh, based on visual cues, while non-living things were distinguished by functional properties based on their uses. One must also consider the distributed plus hub theory, also known as the hub and spoke memory. Hubs rely on the anterior temporal lobe, ATL, and this is an integration center that combines distributed information, which are known as spokes that hold modality-specific information. As a result, these provide efficient ways of integrating information from different sense modalities, and spokes are accumulated knowledge storage throughout time. In summary, we looked at semantic memory, sentence verification tasks, linguistic hedges, network models, nodes, hierarchical network models, cognitive economy, frequency of co-occurrence, typicality effects, spreading activation models, semantic priming effects, feature comparison models, distributed representation, two-stage decision models, organization of concepts in the brain, perceptual functional theory, and finally distributed plus hub theory. Thanks for watching and join me in the next video whereby I talk about concepts and categories. Bye-bye.